Hi everyone, my name is Craig and I am a film director and producer. And in today's video, we are taking a look at some Sony a7 IV S-Log3 footage. This is an awesome camera that you might already own or be thinking about purchasing, but I haven't seen a ton of creators provide footage for their audience to utilize. One of the best ways to know if a camera is right for you is to work with the files. And I wish when I was starting out that there were more resources available about shooting in log format, as well as footage that I could practice with. I've already made a couple of videos about how to color correct S-Log3 footage on the A7S III and the Sony A1, and I will link those videos down in the description below so you can check them out. There's also footage to download linked in both of those videos, but today we're working with the Sony A7 IV. I will make all of the footage in this video Video available to you to download so you can practice yourself. All of these clips are 1080p resolution, shot at 10-bit 422 XAVCSI, which is the highest quality the A7 IV can offer. And I think that all of this footage was shot also at 60 frames per second. Um, so yeah, feel free to work with these files and whatever software you edit with. And if you decide to post them, feel free to tag me on Instagram at Craig29, Craig with a K, so I can see how your edits turned out. So for today's footage, we're looking at several different weddings that I shot this past summer. And if you stick around for the end of this video, I'm gonna go through a few of these clips and show you how I color corrected them in Adobe Premiere. Oh, also I'm, I'm providing you with some S Cinetone footage from one of the weddings that I shot in. I shot it in S Cinetone. And so I'm providing a few clips from that so you can see how the A7 IV renders Sony's new S Cinetone profile. But for now, here's all the footage that is available to you to download down in the description below. Okay, jumping into Premiere, we're gonna just go ahead and look at some of these corrections. I have about 10 clips here that I'm gonna show you very briefly and just work through them one at a time so you can see the correction process that I did for these clips. So starting with clip number one, here's a bride and her mom doing some, some jewelry stuff going on. So I'm gonna turn off the correction layer so you can see what it was like before in S-Log and there's the correction. Um, the biggest takeaways for this, so your curves are gonna be where you get that contrast and kind of convert to that Rec 709 color space with that S curve. Um, so that's how we did that. Another thing is skin tones are always really important. So this vector scope, you can actually go in, I'll show you in another clip, you can go and create like a mask around your subject's skin tones and then you go into your vector scope and you're, you'd be able to use this skin tone line right here and correct the skin tones to make sure that they fall directly on that line. So I did that with this clip and that's what I think really saved this image. And you can see some of those basic correction adjustments right here as well. You can see all that green, it's just not good. So we corrected that and you can see those settings there. Next clip, um, here's just another shot of the bride. I'm actually gonna show you the skin tones real quick. So this is how you do that. Um, you'll go into your effects. You just wanna click on the clip itself and we'll draw a mask. We'll just go around her forehead right now. Drawing a mask just around her skin tone. So now all we can see is her skin tone. Then we're gonna go back to our, our adjustment layer. I'll make this a bit bigger so we can see what's going on with the skin tones. You can see that this, this 
Vectroscope is now measuring only the color value of her skin tones, which are falling directly on that skin tone line. If you want to, you can kind of go in and, and correct things even more if you want. If you'd rather her, if you know this person's skin tone falls more on the red side, you can kind of shift her to the, the right a little bit of that skin tone line. If it's more of a yellow, you can come to the left. Um, but that's how you measure that skin tone line. If you'd like a detailed tutorial on this, I'm actually gonna be doing that this year. I have a full course that I'm gonna be creating on YouTube for this kind of content and how to um, color correct and use color checkers and all of that kind of stuff. So stay tuned for that, but this is just a quick overview of the color correction process. Other notable features about this clip are the basic correction is just where you can bring your, after you make all your adjustments, I just turn it off. You can see it's kind of sickly green because of that room color you can correct all of that in this basic correction tab really simply. So I'd encourage you to, to try that out. Here's our next clip. Just let it play for a second. You can see bride and groom laughing out in this field. So one of the biggest adjustments I made was to, this field out here was just kind of a weird color. Um, so here is the hue adjustments I made in this image. So I, I've noticed that the, the A7 IV leans a little bit green. Um, so these color adjustments help to correct their skin tones. You can see I'm turning that on and off, corrected their skin tones to the correct color and also shifted these greens a little bit. Um, I'll show you where those are. So you can shift these whatever direction you want. And so if you want a little bit of a warmer grass behind them, you could do that. If you'd like it to be more truly green, you could do that. Um, but I liked it right here in the middle between like a yellowish, orangish, you know, grass. Okay, the next shot is from a send off of another wedding. Um, and something that you're gonna get when you get sparklers is a lot of smoke. And if it's that blue hour where the sun has already set, um, it, your subjects that are in the shade are actually gonna be a cooler color temperature than they normally would be. So outside, typically you'd like to shoot around 5,600 Kelvin would be a common color temperature, but you're always gonna actually shoot at a warmer Kelvin than that in the shade. Those are closer to like 6,000, 7,000 Kelvin. And here, when you add smoke into that mix, you're gonna get a lot of blues. So one of the things that I did in this clip, as you can see over here, really brought down these blue shadows because let me turn that on and off and you can kind of see, um, it's hard to see on this, but there's just a lot of smoke like in his, showing up on his vest and in the vest of the groomsmen over here. Um, so I didn't like that. So I removed a lot of those blues. So that's just a helpful tip for working in like cold kind of set off environments with all the smoke. Okay, the next clip, same wedding is a sunset shot of the bride and groom, forehead to forehead here. Um, there's the S-log footage, here's the correction. Um, things to note, when working at golden hour, your lighting is a little bit tricky when you correct because the sky is so golden that you, you don't wanna overcompensate for the golden sky because if you feel like it's too warm and you try to bring it back, your subjects are gonna be too cool. So really just embrace the golden hour look. Um, don't push it too far because as soon as you start going too far, it, it looks horrible. Um, here's some basic corrections that I did. It was leaning a little bit cold and green, so I warmed it up a little bit, not too much, um, because my subject, I wanted them to be, look like they're more part of the scene, more part of the background of the golden hour sky, um, but they're technically in the shadow, which is why they're a little bit of a colder color temperature. So for this correction of this bride, another wedding, I, this is her getting ready. I wanna show you again how to view the skin tones and, and correct for the skin tones if needed. So we're gonna select our clip, create a mask around just the skin tones of the bride. You could select more if you want. So there we go, we're looking just at her skin. And if we look at our scopes here, we can see that it's falling a little bit towards the red side of the line, um, but it has kind of this like curve around it. And I know that this bride had a little bit of more red skin tones, um, but let me show you what it looked like before I did the correction. So I'm gonna turn this correction off and we'll see them shift to the left a little bit. And so she looked a little bit yellow green in the image. So I, I knew that was incorrect. So I was able to go in, select just for her skin tones and shift those by using this little tab right here. I can shift, you can see her up in this little corner. She's super purple now. Um, or you can make her green like the Hulk. Um, but what I did is just shift her to a correct position where I knew her skin tones would fall more naturally. Same situation here, corrected for her skin tones and went from this image to this image, and I think it looks really beautiful. The last correction here I wanna show you, um, I turned off these the, the correction for these, this lighting in this room. A lot of times when you have mixed light where you have natural light and you have like tungsten bulbs or fluorescent tubes, it can, it can create weird effects where lights are looking like they're really shifting towards yellow or to, or to green or to purple. And in this instance, the lights definitely were shifting towards green. 
And so I'm able to correct for that in your hue. So if I turn that correction on, you can see we make those lights look definitely more natural, like a warm inviting tone rather than like a sickly green tone. So that's what we did for that one. Well, if you got this far, thanks so much for sticking around. I actually went into a little bit more in depth color correction in my Sony S-Log3 color correction tutorial where I go step-by-step -step through a few clips. Um, so check out that one. That one's a little bit more in depth. This one's just an overview of some of the settings and what I did for a few of these clips. Um, but I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. It really helps what we're doing here um, for you guys. So uh, thanks so much and much love.